So now that we've established the main functions associated with excretion, what I want to get into now uh, in a little bit more detail is looking at this idea of nitrogenous wastes. Because these are going to be the, the main reason, the main purpose for this entire system. Somehow, some way, we have to get rid of these nitrogenous wastes. And it's worth understanding where they come from and what forms we have to eventually convert them into so that they can be safely excreted via this system. As we go through this flowchart, uh, I want you to look at figure 44.7 as a visual guide to understanding the process of nitrogenous waste and their origins and their eventual excretion. So to briefly summarize, how do we get nitrogenous waste? We, I basically you know, gave you a preface in the previous video. You know, they come from metabolism somehow, some way, uh, and we got to get rid of them. Let me give you a little bit more uh, of an understanding of where in metabolism they come from. So nitrogenous wastes are nitrogen-based wastes. They have that N within them. They have a nitrogen within them. And we've seen nitrogen before in many different uh, macromolecules and even within fundamental molecules that are building blocks. And specifically, I'm talking about proteins and nucleic acids. If you remember, proteins are made up of smaller components called what? Amino acids. Amino acids have an amine group. Amine group has a nitrogen within it, right? So that's where one part of nitrogen is going to come from. Nucleic acids, remember those? Those are building blocks of DNA. They contain uh, that ribose sugar or deoxyribose sugar, a phosphate group, but also a nitrogenous base. A nitrogenous base like A, T, C, or G. That's where nitrogen is going to come from from there. So what happens in the grand scheme of things with these two uh, really important macromolecules? What we have to understand is that proteins and nucleic acids both are going to be eventually broken down. They're going to be eventually broken down for energy. They can be broken down via cell met metabolic mechanisms so that they can be harnessed for energy, um, or they can be, or they can be converted. Okay, they can be converted into uh, fats or carbs. And the details of which we do not need to go over, they are very, very complex. This is very much a biochemistry course. If you ever take one, you'll learn about all the details associated with this. But notice that these are metabolic processes, breaking down, converting these inputs into some other outputs. There's going to be consequences of that. There are going to be wastes based off of this process. This process is going to go, uh, is basically going to be done via something known as deamination. And what did I say before? Uh, an amino group, anything that's an amino group has that nitrogen within it. Deamination is all about removing an amino group, whether it's from a nitrogenous base, whether it's from an amino acid. So this deamination process, more specifically, is going to be part of this idea. And what it really means is you just remove, deamination removes that amino group. And if you remember, an amino group is NH2. So it removes amino group from whatever molecule is being converted or broken down into energy. Uh, so we remove the amino group from the molecule. Whether it's a protein amino acid or a nucleic acid, DNA, whatever it may be, we're just going to remove the amino group via a process known as deamination. Then what are we going to do? We actually convert this amino group. Uh, the details of which we don't need to worry about. Just know that it's going to be converted in this metabolic process to something known as ammonia. So ammonia is different than amino than an amino group. Okay. So an amino group is NH2. Ammonia is going to be NH3. This one extra hydrogen makes all the difference. Because when you convert it to this form, and that's just a, going to be a, a process of the metabolic need, it, the, it's just going to be something that has to happen based off of the metabolism that's going to be going on, what you actually have here now is something that's highly toxic. It is highly toxic. And this, this seems like, okay, wow, oh, you make something highly toxic through this metabolic process, uh, you've got to somehow do what? You've got to somehow get rid of it, right? If it's highly toxic, this ammonia that's being uh, you know, formed through this metabolic process, uh, we can't build it up. We can't store it in any way. We have to immediately remove it. Uh, and I think that's important to write down. So we, we can't store. Uh, it's not safe to store lots of ammonia within the body. So what do we have to do? We must 
excrete it. We must use excretion. This is what the purpose of the excretory system really truly is right now. To get rid of this nitrogenous waste, it's a nitrogen-based compound known as ammonia that is toxic if stored at high levels. Therefore, we must use excretion to get rid of it. That's going to be the physiological concept that we're going to get into, but this is where it all roots itself from. Now, a little bit more on ammonia. The idea about ammonia as a nitrogenous base is important to understand a bit further because it helps us understand why we must excrete it and how we can possibly use excretory system to do that process. So ammonia is a classic nitrogenous waste. There are going to be others actually that you'll see in just a second. Uh, and there's a difference between how ammonia is going to be excreted depending on the organism. If we're looking at aquatic animals, that's not us, by the way, these are like fishes, right? Uh, aquatic animals will have to excrete ammonia. They actually have the capability of taking ammonia, NH3, and it's excreted directly. And you'll see what I mean by directly when you see how we have to actually excrete ammonia. It's an indirect process because we have to convert it into something else. They have this capability of excreting ammonia directly because they are going to be within water, they're aquatic, right? They're always going to be surrounded by water, and ammonia is very, very soluble. It's very soluble in H2O. It easily dissolves within H2O, and because of that, aquatic organisms, aquatic animals, have this unique capability of just using diffusion. A high concentration of ammonia on the inside, low concentration on the outside external aquatic environment. What's ammonia going to do? Ammonia as the solute just diffuses out. And specifically it'll diffuse out of, let's say, the gills of the organism uh, or even the body surfaces. It's just going to be a very simple diffusion process. It's going to be without energy. It's going to be very clean and easy. This is going to be very rapid, this process. It's, it's going to be a, a product of their environment. Since they're around water, they can easily use diffusion for this process. We can, uh, you know, overall just call this a very efficient excretion mechanism because no energy is invested, uh, very little metabolic energy is needed for this process to occur. So we'll write that down. Very little, met for metabolic, big E for energy needed to excrete ammonia if you are an aquatic animal. That's not us, we are terrestrial, right? Terrestrial animals have it a little bit harder and you'll see why in just a second. You should already be thinking, why would it be harder to excrete ammonia if you are on land and not in water? Well, first of all, you're not surrounded by water. You can't just diffuse it out. Terrestrial animals have to do something else. Because they lack an unlimited, you know, pretty much unlimited if you're in water, if you're living in water, H2O supply, right? We don't, uh, we're not constantly within water, right? Uh, we lack an unlimited external, I should say, H2O supply to easily dissolve to easily dissolve, and we know it easily dissolves because it's highly soluble, to easily dissolve that toxic ammonia uh, and also remove it. To easily dissolve plus remove. Dissolve and remove, but we lack an unlimited H2O supply. And because of that, what do we have to do? We actually have to convert it into a different form must convert, and this is where the excretory system comes in, this is where a lot of uh, biochemistry comes in, must convert uh, NH3 to, and there are two other options within this uh, nitrogenous waste conversion system, uh, either urea, that's going to be us by the way, and then later, uh, or other organisms, or I should say, uh, will use or utilize, convert into uric acid. We'll get into the details of what urea and uric acid really are and how they're converted to whatever they may be uh, in the next video.